Yeah. <laughs> you are, like, the original forefather of black TV. Like, without you, a lot of shows wouldn't even have happened and started. But when you sit back home now and see shows like myself and Mo and so many other, like, black te television stars coming through, how do you feel? Because remember, you know, when you was popping, TVs were pregnant. You get what I mean? Like, TVs had big back and everything. <laughs> <laughs> You know a funny thing, yeah? Harla was the first time I knew I had to have an aerial. You never had an aerial? What did you used to do? No, you just take the silver hanger and you shove it in the back of the TV. <laughs> that was standard, didn't it? <laughs> this is the best conversation of my life, by the way. <laughs> I think you were asking about um, what it's like to watch telly now as opposed to... Yeah, man, back, back in the day. day. It hasn't changed as much as I thought it was going to change. Mm. Uh, because what happens is black artists get a show and they get one season, maybe two seasons, and then, bang, mm. they're gone. Um, and what's great is now you've got BAFTA Award winning you guys and you're representing, but there still needs to be some progress made in terms of giving people a proper chance and giving them a run, you know. One day we'll have that. And you guys are proving that it's possible to do that. So keep doing that. This is the most black people I've seen backstage in any show I've ever done in my right, life. Right, I don't do it, the revolution! The revolution! Sure. Can I ask you, Lenny, when you was on TV, did you feel like there was a big pressure to really represent the black community? Because when I first had my show, and I guess it'll be the same for yourself, Nasty, like, you always want to represent our culture to the highest, but I could imagine it when you was on TV, that was kind of non-existent, so did you feel that? It was really weird because I'm from Dudley in the middle as my parents are Jamaican, but people wanted to see the African life experience. They wanted to see the kind of Somalian, the Gambian, the Ghanaian, the London African. They wanted to see all kinds of cultures. And that's what I talk about in, with Marcus in our new book, which is called Black British Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. It's this idea of the black experience not just being one person's experience. Mm -hmm. There's lots of us, and there's lots of different type of black person, and we should celebrate all of those different types. <laughs> oh. Do you feel like there is that kind of pressure to represent, like, where you're from as well? For me, growing up, I grew up in Felton. There mm. wasn't many black people with us. It was quite... I was you so grew up in prison blood? <laughs> no, I, I went around the corner from that. But that's where you grew up. You had to learn, you know, to kind of find your way around and mm. in life. It's about being able to find your own path. I went to school there, I grew up, and then earlier in my career, I didn't even know how to train. And then at that point, I realised, like, listen, how am I going to compete with these guys if this Kenyan, Ethiopian guy is, like, winning, killing it? You're like, what are they doing? You have to question, what, what, what are you doing? And kind of, mm. then again, find your way and then see where you can, you know, how you can fix it. And, and you went out there, though, didn't you? I took myself out there so I could observe and understand what they're doing. And, and what were like, they doing? Like, eat, sleep, train. That was it. Yeah. I didn't have <laughs> life outside there. 